What's up everyone? You know the drill by now. I'm Mimic and today we're covering Vera Rosen's leak. So sit back, let Vera put on your favorite dog collar, and let me tell you the best way to use her with her leap. Her best memories, best team setup, and more. So we're gonna start by covering her kit first off, and tell you exactly what it does. So to start, her first leap skill, Scorching Peril, increases the base damage and healing of her blue orb by 20%. At level 9, when Vera is switched out, she performs a core attack once to a random target within her dark field every 1.5 seconds. At level 18, whenever Vera's core attack or dark knight slash hits an enemy marked by her blue orb, the mark will be removed and deal explosion damage and perform healing equal to the full amount of her blue orb's effect. After that, the mark moves to another random enemy within the field. The next leap skill, Void of Darkness. Damn, I'm kind of feeling edgy reading these now. Anyway. When casting the signature move with max overclocking points, Vera enters the darkness form, dealing 480% dark damage to the surrounding area and creating a night field afterward, which deals 120% dark damage per second for 6 seconds. She cannot gain signature energy and overclocking points while in darkness form, and unleashing all core attacks in dark knight slashes in darkness form will activate signature dark knight's end, dealing 800% dark damage and ending the darkness form. At level 9, she gains 80 energy in Randall Signal Orb when she enters battle. Upon casting Signature, all remaining Darkness Orbs are converted into Blue Orbs, with a max stack of 3. At level 18, it creates a Dark Field immediately after casting Signature move. Finally, Elusive Disruption. Vera can perform Core Attacks anytime while she is in Darkness form, and all Orbs are converted to Darkness Orbs. Ping Darkness Orbs to perform Dark Knight Slash dealing 600% dark damage. Dark Knight slashes come with additional dodge calculation, and triggering Matrix will grant an extra two Darkness Orbs. Exiting Core Attacks will turn Darkness Orbs back to normal Signal Orbs. At level 9, consecutive Dark Knight slashes deal increasing damage, the base damage increasing up to 75%. At level 18 in Darkness form, pinging a Signal Orb or Darkness Orb will increase the base damage of Signature move by 50% with a max of 200%. Okay, with all the edgy word vomit out of the way, let's just show you how it works. What you need to do is make sure her core passive gauge is full all the way before you ult, so that you get special orbs. Once you have the special orbs, spam them and press signature move again. See? Easy. Right? Well, let's talk about teams, setup, and more first. So your best bet is having a team consisting of Lamia and Karenina. However, Karenina can be replaced if you have Triple S A rank 21 or Kamui Bastion. Though I don't really recommend that last option all that much. Next, if you're really behind and you don't have Lamia, first off, ouch, and I'm sorry. Second, your next best option is going to be Luna Laurel, followed by a Leap Watana Bay Astral if you're coping super hard. Now, Vera's main role here is being a support, so she isn't going to have a whole lot of field time. However, while Vera is a super good budget option, in truth, she's going to need her signature weapon, Triple S, and her Leap to outperform Selena who, despite having many flaws, is still very much completely free. Now let's talk about memories real quick, and this is important. Well, personally, I recommend 4-piece Da Vinci and 2-piece Guinevere. You can also run 4-piece Bathalon and 2-piece Kadi to get that extra signature energy. However, because Vera is really only going to be on the field for a couple seconds, the Da Vinci memory set is going to be your best bet, seeing as you'll be swapping off Vera in no time. Back to your next unit, most likely Lamia or Karenina. Okay, so Vera is going to be your starter, and in this example, which should be the case for most of you, Lamia is going to be leader. Starting with Vera, switch off immediately into Lamia, do her rotation, then switch into your tank. In this case, Karenina. Do her rotation, and finally back into Vera. This is where the leap will come into effect. If she has her core passive charge, great. Make sure to pop the ult first. Then core passive, ping the darkness orbs, ult again for extra damage, and switch back to Lamia. If she doesn't have ult yet, she shouldn't be far away. So you could 3 ping to ultimate, or if Lamia's cooldown is done, just switch back to your DPS. It should be noted that you could also switch from Vera into Karenina into Lamia instead. However, this applies more for double S3 Karenina. So how important is it to leap Vera Rosen? Which dear viewer who totally just asked this question just right now, it's important if it meets certain criteria. The first and most important is... Do you like Rosen? If the answer is yes, then leaping her is vital. The next question is, do you have an invested cell in a Capriccio? 
Which, if you do, then suddenly leaving her is a lot less important. So in reality, it's, it's more of a, do you have an investment in Vera and want her to be stronger? Or are you okay with just getting your free selling? Well, everyone, that's going to do it for me on this video. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe as it really helps me out. I have a Discord that is growing and a very helpful community that is growing as well. And I stream over at twitch.tv forward slash And with that, everyone, take care and I'll see you on the next video.